Hello again, everyone. Mark Ackle, Macomb County Executive. John Paul Rea, uh, Deputy County Executive. Just giving you some updates on what's going on. Uh, again, we're looking at the statistics, the numbers uh, that we're seeing here in Macomb County. We want to update you on that on a regular basis, just so you know the extent of the issues here in Macomb County. Uh, you know, we're, we're moving up again, unfortunately. Yeah, Mark, unfortunately, we're in 347 cases confirmed in Macomb County and 11 deaths. Statewide, the cases have jumped up to about 2,800 cases and 60 deaths. So again, I think we're still on that upward trajectory, which falls in line with everything the health professionals are saying. And our uh, health departments, we're not only working with our internal epidemiologists, but also with the local uh, health systems. And again, you can go to our website, macombgov.org, get all the statistical information about that. Is there um, even the heat map? talking about areas in Macomb County that are, I think are more susceptible at this point in time uh, to that movement, migration of this particular uh, coronavirus. So we tend to look at the country. Apparently, uh, the United States has more cases now than China and Italy. Unfortunately, Italy, the United States is on the top of that list. Mark. Yeah, Italy had uh, 80,000 <coughs> cases, apparently China 81, and now the United States is at 82,000. So it is a real issue, folks. Again, this whole idea about flattening the curve, social distancing, can't stress it enough. You're hearing it from everybody every time you hear a story that comes out. Washing your hands, social distance. So why? Because uh, obviously here in Macomb County, we're seeing these numbers increase. And uh, my understanding is this isn't going to uh, slow down anytime soon. They're looking at peaking sometime second week possibly of, uh, of April is what they're looking at right now. We're getting a lot more of those models out there, not only with our emergency personnel, but obviously with the health uh, uh, systems throughout the county. It's looking at the larger issue with regards to the community spread and how we can continue to combat that, not only with the personal responsibility, the social distancing, and the stay home, stay safe. Yeah, and that whole uh, modeling that uh, JP's talking about, uh, working with, uh, I guess, if you will, the healthcare industry, CDC, and even some of the universities around the country, they tend to give up projections based upon an area um, it's, a, it's a guesstimate. It's kind of a rough estimate of where it's going, but based upon data, facts, and, uh, and input from the health in, in healthcare uh, industry. And they're saying here in this area, in, uh, in I guess, Michigan, they're talking mid-April. So that's going to be problematic for the healthcare mm -hmm. providers here. And uh, we've been working uh, with the National Guard. Uh, Vector Dr. Rogers and I talked earlier today about what they're going to be working with us on and even the Army Corps of Engineers about looking for space or opportunities to figure out where hospitals can go for more bed space because the capacity at the hospitals is uh, is peaking out and they're running into a problem right now uh, with the hospitals. Yeah, Mark, our emergency operations personnel are not only working and have active conversations with the Army Corps of Engineers and also folks from the National Guard to really see what are those contingency sites that we can scale up in the county and how we can support that surge capacity with our local um, uh, general hospitals. And you're seeing that. I mean, they're, they're flooded and uh, it's becoming a challenge. So we've located with our planning department some potential sites around the area, whether it's some of the sc uh, schools, uh, obviously uh, Macomb Community College is a potential location for that. Uh, some other business areas that we're talking to to try to figure out what can be something that could be utilized if and when we need to find space for, I guess, more makeshift hospitals for beds for those that uh, are, I guess, uh, coming across this coronavirus issue. So we're getting there, yep. uh, working with the state, our emergency management team, uh, trying to get ahead of it, preparing for what might be to come. And again, we don't want to get caught uh, not having the availability of those spaces. So it's, it's become quite of a challenge. Uh, Absolutely, Mark. I think not only are we starting to rethink the way that we're deploying these services, but figure out how we can assist with that surge capacity and ensure that the healthcare providers have all the critical resources they need. And one of the other areas that we're concerned about is the, uh, the unemployment rate. Yeah. And we're hearing people here in this county. I mean, people are you know, off work, uh, try to figure out how do they collect those unemployment benefits. Uh, right now, uh, you're talking in the state of Michigan, 130,000 cases right now, 3.3 million across the country. These are all-time historic highs in unemployment. And I think you've been hearing about that, many different news stories uh, that are out there. I don't think it's a surprise to many people listening, but the, pro the question is, what can people do about it? How do they get information uh, to try to figure out if they're affected by this? What can they do to, to get this unemployment uh, and to connect with that? Yeah, Mark, yesterday with the job report that came out, the jobless report that came out was truly one of those statistics where we illustrated and started to look at our capacity. Our Michigan Works, M uh, Macomb St. Clair Michigan Works here, John Beerbussy and his team, Chris Riley, what they're doing, not only with the state's unemployment um, uh, insurance agency, giving people avenues to not only go online, make calls, call caseworkers, all that information is on macombgov.org. You'll be able to get those resources. There's PDF guides on how you do file, what are your options, what other supports
support services are there, and should you, family or friends, need any of those social support services, you can also look to our community action agency. Yeah, we don't know when this is going to be, you know, I guess, uh, coming to, to a closure. Uh, so there may be more people impacted, even if somebody's listening to this right now isn't impacted, prepare yourself for the potential of something like that happen with your company or business. So again, macombgov.org, uh, plenty of resources, information available to folks. Now we've added this uh, particular link uh, to the state to try to figure out what do I need to do, how do I navigate uh, if I've got a concern or a claim uh, that deals with unemployment. So uh, trying to work through that, uh, very, very important. But one of the other interesting things is we get a lot of questions on and we've made it available on site as well is people are questioning about some of the uh, restrictions yeah. on behalf of what's going on with this uh, state's stay home, st stay safe, save lives, uh, I guess if you will, uh, requirement. And so with that being said, what's essential, what's not essential, what should be open, shouldn't be open. We're hearing people sometimes complain, this business is open, it shouldn't be. Um, I was going to close mine, but I see somebody else is doing it. We cannot and I cannot possibly, uh, I, I guess if you will, help uh, give you the opinion as to what I believe some of that uh, says. I can give you my thoughts on it, but the only clear, concise, uh, I guess, response to those type of questions you may have has to come from the governor's office. Again, this is a official uh, executive order from the governor. They do have a location or connectivity where if you do have questions about some of those issues, uh, you need to contact them to find it out. So I can always give a guesstimate about something, but uh, if you want some more certainty to the questions you have, you're going to have to reach out to the governor's office. So macombgov.org, once again, there's a link to the governor's actual order. And with that, there's also a connectivity to maybe help answer some of the questions you may have. Yeah, we're directing a lot of individuals to the constituent service line. Those folks are getting directed, whether it's to licensing and regulatory affairs or labor and economic opportunity. Mark, we've received a flush of calls from companies. We're starting to get them directly linked into this information from the state level and clarify not only some of the questions with regards to the executive order, but those businesses that want to scale up and support these efforts, we're also getting them those resources too. Yeah, and speaking of the governor, I know she's been talking about this uh, uh, recently, uh, about the schools and uh, you know what we're hearing is prepare yourself or brace yourself for the school year uh, having already ended. Um, I don't believe they're going to be going back to school is basically what the governor is saying. Um, I kind of am projecting or seeing that as well based upon what we're looking at as far as a peak and then obviously right after the peak it doesn't mean everything opens you still are you know we're, we're dealing with somewhat of the downslope that might be coming our way so you know it's already been said on behalf of the governor that uh, you know this may uh, this may have been the end of the school season when they close those schools. So, I think that's one of the sinking realities Mark not only is we're getting additional intel and insight from Mike DeVault from our ISD trying to understand what type of contingencies are in place from the state but again it's the whole notion stay home stay safe save lives and a big part of that is look when we got nearly 130,000 kids in our K through 12 system we got to make sure we're protecting those kids. Yeah, and again, essential services still open here at the county mm -hmm. and uh, even throughout the state. Uh, one of those is people were just uh, noticing on some of the news media accounts uh, talking about a pedestrian bridge on I-94 by Van Dyke in, uh, near the Detroit area. Uh, they, they think maybe possibly a car hauler may have hit it and took it out. MDOT is already out there trying to clear that up and try to figure out how they take it out to open it up so that people can travel down 94. Thankfully, there's less traffic volume because of the stay safe, uh, stay home order. Uh, but with that being said, just want to remind everybody, the governor's MDOT is still working, still working on the road projects, moving forward with those plans, and as well, so is the county with our Department of Roads. Yeah. All of that information about what projects we're working on, projects the state's working on, MDOT has their projects. Macomb, uh, Macomb County, once again, macombgov.org, you can log on to the information uh, from our roads uh, icon and get all those projects as well. We're not shutting down county business. We're flattening the curve with the employees we have in here, but we still know we have to provide an essential service to the public. So Mark, that's I, on the roadside, Brian Santo and our Department of Roads, the team's been doing absolutely wonderful. The maintenance crews are out there as we're getting here into springtime, not only keeping an eye on those potholes, but also keeping an eye for any of those drains and how we're clearing those out things and coordinating with Public Works, Sue and Candace Miller's team. So crews are out there, we're on it, and if anything needs to come in, hey, we stand by and ready to answer any of those calls. Yeah, so weather's good. Again, as I mentioned, uh, get the kids out, uh, go out for a walk, uh, keep that social distance from others, but uh, try to enjoy yourself best you can. But please, please keep in mind, uh, we still have some serious concerns or serious issues uh, impacting our communities here in Macomb County. And we want you to keep that social distance and that social space. So in the meantime, uh, thank you for joining us once again. We'll continue to update you. Uh, please uh, keep yourself and your family safe. Appreciate thank the you. time, everyone.